good if you learn it, so we need to continue our little adventure, my friend. Then they were in the middle of a park. There were many children playing around, and he said to her, be careful, the ball will hit you, and Sarah felt. Something hit her on her back. She turned to see what hit her, and it was a ball. She took it, and a little girl came to her. Are you okay? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. She said, Sarah turned around and realized that Taker was gone again. Of course, she said, she gave the ball back to the girl, looked around her, and looked at her clothes. She was very dirty. The girl looked at her, and said, you are new here. I have never seen you here before. All the children from our village come to play here. My name is Katie and are you? Sarah looked at the hand of the girl for some seconds and took it. She introduced herself. I'm Sarah. Do you want to play with me? She asked Sarah. Sure, why not? And the two girls play for more than two hours. It was getting late and all the children were going home. Katie went to her home and Sarah slept in the park. She found an old car and spent the night inside. The next day, in the afternoon, Sarah saw how all the children had come to the park. Most of them came with their parents, and she saw a small umbrella coming inside the park. The girl went under the trees and closed her umbrella, then sat down. Sarah got out of the car and met Katie. Hi. Katie, how are you? I'm well and you? Good, said Sarah. Katie took the three sandwiches out of her bag and asked Sarah if she wanted to eat with her. Sarah said yes, she was hungry and ate two sandwiches. Katie asked Sarah why she was living on the street. If she didn't have any family in the village, no, said Sarah. Katie, why are you playing alone? She asked her. All the children here are scared of me. Why? Said Sarah surprised to the answer of her new friend. Because of my albinism, all parents believe that I will give bad luck to their children if I play with them. Sometimes some children throw me things, and my parents lost their jobs when their bosses learned that they had a child like me. Now they work for the church of the village. I'm sorry, Katie, said Sarah. Don't be sad, she said. All is fine. My family loves me the way I am. I guess that is the most important thing. They played for hours. When the time came to go home, Katie asked Sarah to come with her. Don't worry, I already asked my parents, and they want to meet you. They went home together. Katie's parents met Sarah. Sarah was surprised to see Katie had two brothers who didn't have albinism. Sarah spent months with Katie and her family. Sarah really loves Katie as her sister. One night when they were eating, Katie asked her father, Dad, Jesus is white or black? Why that question? He asked her. I just wanted to know. He smiled and said, I think Jesus was black because, at the time when Jesus was alive in the old Egypt, Egyptian people were all black, so he couldn't be white. Otherwise, their parents couldn't hide him there, but I want you to make a promise to me. Okay, she said, never say what I just told you to anyone. He said, okay dad, I will never say it to anyone. She answered, it's our secret my love, said her mum. Marley was doing Katie hair, and Sarah was looking. She smiled and said to Katie, you have beautiful hair, thank you, she responded, you also have beautiful red hair, and they laughed. With time, the two girls become very close and Sarah decides to protect Katie against all the children in the village. Every day, she took her from school to home. They walked from school to home every day, talked and laughed all the way. Every time Sarah went to school there was a red car outside, and she always had that bad feeling when she saw the car. One day on her way to get Katie, she saw the man in the car slapping a girl in the car, and the car went far from her. The next day, she saw the car outside again, and went to knock on the window of the car. The man opened the windows, Oh, I'm sorry I thought you were my Uncle Joe because he had the same care as you. I'm sorry, she said and left. Two days later, Sarah went to school and waited for Katie.
Even after all the children leave the school, she asked the security man if he saw her today, and he responded to her. I saw her in the morning when you dropped her in front of the gate. That's all. But did she go inside the school? Sarah asked him. Yes, he said. Then Sarah left and went back home, took the phone and called Marley. She told Marley that Katie was missing, and her husband Joe had come home and called the police. The next day, the police started to search for Katie. After days of research, they finally found a body. They called Joe and Marley to see the body. They came back destroyed by what they saw. Oh my God, how someone can do that to a child of eight years old. Marley cried her daughter for days. Sarah also cried for her friend. A week later, the police caught the man who killed Katie. Sarah said everything that she found strange when she went to pick up Katie and described the man and his car, even the registration number of the car. The man explained to the police that he needed an albino child to do magic with her blood and her head, and he also recognized that he had killed another girl before Katie. When the police officer explained it to Joe and Marley, Sarah heard all the conversation and got angry and wanted him to be dead for what he did to Katie. He must have died. She screamed. Joe and Marley turned. She was behind them and saw her. Why was he alive? When Katie was dead because of him and she ran away, Joe tried to catch her outside, but he couldn't find her. It seemed like she vanished. Sarah found herself in front of Taker in her seat. Well, Sarah, what did you learn from this experience? Sarah answered with anger, hate, and he smiled. 